Hi everybody, so we're going to start making these little ladle scoops by throwing a small bowl off the hump. So I'm really just centering this top portion here and um, then we'll throw a small bowl and I'll show you how to get that off the wheel. When I center this, I'm pushing down on the top and in on the side with an equal pressure. I'll open with my thumbs um, and I'd like to do that because my thumbs kind of have that bell curve like a bowl. You see that here. And then you're gonna scoop your inside hand while you're pulling up with your, straight up with your outside hand. So your inside hand kind of forms a backward C as you pull and your outside hand comes straight up. I like to use the sponge in my outside hand so that it stays wet longer. Um, that clay tends to collect less on my fingers that way. Okay, so to get this off the wheel, you first want to clean off the slurry on the outside. And I'm also taking my rib, the curvy part of my rib, and kind of forming the curve, compressing the inside, and getting the slurry off on the inside all at the same time. I'll take my chamois and just kind of kiss that rim a little bit with it. And then what I'm going to do is come underneath the floor of this little ladle scoop here and I'm creating a shelf with my finger. Um, then what I'm gonna do is create a little guide for my cut wire with the tip of my wooden knife tool. And these things are kind of super helpful um, to help you get things off the hump without creating a lot of jagged edges or uneven parts to um, trim later. So I'm kind of following that line that I made with my knife tool with the pad of my index fingers. I undercut it. Clean, dry hands are key to this. Um, dry off your hands on your towel or apron, and then you should be able to just pop that right off by putting the pressure of your fingers at the base where you just cut. Now you can cone up and cone down, recenter this, and make another ladle off your hump of clay. Okie dokie, the next step is to trim after this sets up for about a week. So you're going to need your trimming tool, a soft rib, some clay for worms, um, a bucket of water. What I'm doing here is tapping it to center um, to recenter this pot. If you're not comfortable with that, you can do the draw the line technique. Um, you're going to lock that down once it's recentered. Uh, with some soft worms, I like to use four points when I'm um, securing the pot to the bat. Um, and then what we're going to do is take our trimming tool and holding it at the neck, I hold it with both hands, um, if at all possible, and I'm going to trim at the edge here. So I'm using the middle of this tool and I'm basically just taking off the edges. This is a little uneven, so I'm letting it ride gently in the beginning. It will level itself out. I just have to kind of go easy uh, at the start. And I'm trimming this round. What I do on occasion to test and make sure that I'm not trimming it too thin is I'm um, doing that ripe fruit test that I talk about sometimes, which means that I'm gonna stop and push on the the pot and uh, what I'm looking for is if it's resistant then I know that the fruit is not ripe and not ready to eat 
if I push on it gently and I feel any kind of spring or bounce, that fruit is ripe and that means that the pot is getting thin. That or it's wet. And you'll know if it's wet if the clay is sticking to itself. So um, in either case, you want to stop trimming and um, either let it dry out or move on to the next step, which is attaching the ladle handle. And we'll talk about that uh, coming up. Okay, so let's talk about pulling the ladle handle. I'm gonna pull it off of this big chunk of clay here. So I form a carrot at the base of this clay so that I can leave the top of it dry. That's what I'm holding on to so it doesn't slip out of my hand. I'm pinching an ellipse shape on my carrot. So I'm kind of pinching the edges and leaving the thicker middle, the middle part thicker. Um, and I spend some time here fashioning my handles. I work the shape, I work my fingerprints out for the most part um, all the way out before I start pulling that handle. So you can see me sort of tapping things down, getting the shape that I um, want to start with, and then I'm going to start pulling. So. I'm not pulling very hard. More when you're pulling handles, gravity is doing the work for you. And I'm using the curvy, meaty part of my hand where my thumb meets my index finger and releasing as I get to the bottom. Um, so lots of water and make sure that you twist your handle back and forth. So you're looking at it from a side view and you're looking at it from a front view. Um, because if you just pull like with it always facing the side, it's going to start to curve towards you. So the reason I twist it back and forth like that is to straighten it out. Um, and the last thing I do is kind of come in with my thumb and index finger and just refine the edges of that handle. I'll set it um, on a bucket or a board with a little bit of a curve already in it so that I don't have to stretch that clay too much to get any kind of curve I'm looking for um, once it has set up and dried. Okay, so next we're gonna work on a transition piece from the ladle handle to the scoop. I, giving due credit where credit is due, um, this is a technique I learned from Lorna Meaden. It's something that she does with her ladles and they really just make that transition quite lovely. Check out her work. It's Lorna Meaden. I, she's a, a great artist and a really nice person. Um, anywho, what I'm doing here is um, making this little dog bone shape, I guess you could call it. It is kind of thicker on the top than it is on the bottom because um, I want a little bit more uh, weight in the part that is attached to the scoop and then it'll kind of taper up into the handle so that will be the skinnier part. I am making a little indention with my um, thumb and then just kind of working my finger through. You can use um, any kind of trimming tool or scooping tool to do that as well. And then I'm kind of thinning the edges of where those little, um, I guess you could call them indentions or um, little mini pinch pots or mouths. You can see what I'm talking about here. Um, and I'm going to kind of work my thumb and work that connection um, where before I slip and score it. Because the more finished it is now, while it's not all soupy with slip, the easier it is to sort of make changes, omit, add um, clay if you want to do that. Uh, so, you know, just take your time with that and, you know, you can kind of see the shape that I'm 
doing here, which is the exact shape that Lorna does with her scoops um, as well. thing that you're going to do is you're going to attach your handle transition to your ladle scoop. So I'm marking here with my needle tool where those score marks are going to be. If your clay cracks on you because it's getting dry um, or it's a little short, just kind of smooth that down with your finger, fill it in with some clay. That's what I did there. And then I'm using my needle tool to get down into that mouth of clay and scratch it up and also where the scoop is, a little bit of slip and attach those two and refine them um, and let that set up for a minute before you go to put the handle in the top because uh, it's a little wet at this point and you need those joints to kind of hold their own shape. In order to um, allow that joint time to dry because it was really wet when I was connecting it, I came, I wrapped everything up in plastic and came back to it the next week. Um, what I'm doing here is refining all my finger marks out of that connection point and then I'm going to slip and score that handle which I've cut shorter if you can see there under my hand. Um, I cut that shorter. I'm going to slip and score that into the top of the transition piece of the scoop there. Um, and then you're done. trick I can give you for um, refining and finishing is one of those little cosmetic sponges. They aren't very porous and they make great finishing sponges because um, they're not going to wipe away the fine particles of clay. Um, and then what you see here is I'm taking a watt tool and kind of cleaning up those connection points. I like leaving the seam because I think it's visually interesting. If you want to erase it, you certainly can. Um, the, the wipeout tool is helpful if you decide not to. Um, and then what I'm going to do after it's all said and done and has set up for a while is I'm going to come through with um, that same thick slip and do that raised decoration like I did on the soup tureen so that it kind of matches as a set. And then you're done! Yay!